Good evening once again. I hope everyone is enjoying the dinner, enjoying some good company tonight. We are going to get into our program and the important part, inducting our new members into the SIUE Athletics Hall of Fame. The way we'll do this is we'll introduce our members, we'll play an induction speech by video, and then we'll invite each of our inductees to the stage well, where we will get uh, a couple of questions for each inductee uh, and then for our team all together. We'll start with our first inductee who unfortunately could not be here with us tonight, and that is Don Ebert, representing the men's soccer team. Don is SIUE's second leading scorer with 52 goals and 22 assists. He led the 1977 team in scoring with 14 goals and six assists as a freshman when the Cougars finished number three in the nation. Ebert followed with 16 goals in 17 games as a sophomore. He led SIUE to the national championship in 1979 with a team leading 22 goals and 162 shots. Ebert left SIUE when he became the number one overall pick for the New York Cosmos of the NASL and he went on to play for the St. Louis Steamers where he was the major indoor soccer league's rookie of the year following the 1980-81 season. Don Ebert. I want to say congratulations to all the other inductees. Great night. Um, congratulations on everything you've done on behalf of your sport and SIU Athletics. Um, you know, when I got the call from Andrew, it made me for the first time, and this is scary to say, 45 years to think back of my time at SIU. And 45 years is a long time. And, you know, um, Three things stuck out at me when, when I sat down. And I think this goes when you're an athlete or if you were just an 18 year old kid figuring out college for the first time, which was a huge decision at that, biggest decision you make in your life. And I think you look for three things. One is, you know, to grow up, to get out on your own. And I was ready for that. And I was very lucky to run into a man like Coach Gelker. Coach Gelker, was a guy who made young men accountable, responsible. He set the bar very high and he told us we could do everything, but you have to be responsible for your decisions. We had a great coach in Rick Benven who took care of all the soccer aspects, but Coach Galker to me was a perfect person for me at 18 years old going away. I needed somebody who could um, lead me down a path to becoming a, a man. And uh, I couldn't have bit, picked a better coach. And I knew within a month of my arrival that I had checked that box. The second box I think we all think about is well, what's your future? What am I gonna do? I wanna go to college and do what? But honestly, the only thing I ever wanted to do was be a pro soccer player. And I made a deal with my father because I was gonna go pro and not go to college. And he said, nope, you're going two years. If if you don't like it, if you have opportunities, but I want you to go for two years. And that was the deal we made. And from the first week of landing at SIU, I saw the, the amount of talented teammates I played with, the coaching, the stadium, the schedule. We were treated first class. We played the best programs in the country and every week, there were pro scouts and pro coaches watching us. And I got to play with some of the best American players, bar none. We had a lot of fun. And I knew within a month that I could pursue my number one goal, which was being a pro soccer player, by staying right there at SIU. And luckily for me, it worked out, but couldn't, couldn't ask for more. And I guess the third thing that we all think about, and um, it certainly hits all of us, is will you ever find someone? Will there be a special someone that you meet in college that is, is a life-changing event? And 
I got very lucky. I met a, my wife of now 41 years at a freshman orientation party at Tower Lake Apartments that we threw. And it was the absolutely single biggest, best thing that ever happened to me. I would not sit here and be sending you this video if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. There's no doubt. We have three kids, three grandkids now. And without, there's no hesitation. That was the best thing for me. I'm a lucky man to have met her again at SIU. So when you look back, and I think of 45 years ago, was that a good choice? Man, it was the best choice I ever made. I got to grow up, I got to pursue with the thing that meant the most to me, and I met the most important person in my life. So on behalf of myself, uh, I just want to say thank you. I'm grateful. I'm humbled to be inducted into the Cougar Hall of Fame, and I hope the night goes great for you all. Thank you all again. Now, as a kid who grew up here in the 80s, I was a gigantic indoor soccer fan, and that guy was uh, my favorite. So I was a little disappointed personally that he wasn't able to make it tonight, but we appreciate Don checking in uh, from California. Don Ebert, our first inductee tonight. Our second inductee, our second inductee is Christine Butler Miller. She was a... She was a six-time All-American in the triple jump, earning honors in the 2005 indoor and outdoor season, the 2006 outdoor season, the 2007 indoor season, and the 2008 indoor and outdoor campaigns. She was a 12-time Great Lakes Valley Conference honoree in the long jump and the triple jump. She captured the 2005 GLVC triple jump championships during both the indoor and outdoor seasons the 2006 GLVC Indoor and Outdoor Long and Triple Jump Championship, the 2007 Indoor Long and Triple Jump Championship, and the Outdoor Triple Jump Championship, and the 2008 Indoor and Outdoor Triple Jump Championship. She remains in the Cougars' top five in both Indoor and Outdoor Triple Jump, as well as the Indoor Long Jump Christine Butler Miller. I want to thank my family and my friends because if it isn't for them, I can't, I don't know where it was I, I would be. I can remember a, a national competition where my um, uncle, who is also my grandfather, actually rode the train down to the national competition. And I, I don't want to exaggerate, but I really feel like he was on the train for like 24 hours. Um, so with that being said, um, the support system that I've had throughout my tenure and with running track, well, I'm not running anymore, but <laughs> through the, throughout the time when I was running has been um, the thing that kept me going. Being here is actually nostalgic because honestly, the crazy thing is, is it was not a peaceful time for me. But um, after I finished with track, I would actually come here um, for peace, just to walk around the track because it just made me feel good. But I literally remember my first um, practice, my very first practice. I wore some emerald green pants. Why? I don't know because it was like August. Um, we had to run a timed 800 and I remember like running and thinking like there is no way I'm going to make it. I fell out. like. <laughs> I had 200 meters left, I passed out. And I remember, okay, so the truth is I faked it. But yeah. <laughs> I remember Marvell coming like, hey man, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I was so terrified, because if anything, like my coach could have revoked my scholarship at that moment. But um, I think from that moment on, like we always knew, like my coach and I had an understanding. He would push me and I would push back, but he always won. <laughs> I feel like in the moment I was just 
in the moment and doing everything that I needed to get I wanted to win and in all honesty in hindsight like um, where I am today I feel like if I would have worked harder I would have got more so I don't know like, and that's crazy to think you know in this position that I am where I'm being inducted into the Hall of Fame like that if I would have worked harder I would have been in a higher position but what we created with SIUE track when um, coach Byers was our coach was a family like we would eat together we would do so many things together so we just enjoy spending time with each other um, we had fun even through all of the the terrible teas and all of the hills and all of the things that we were going through we had fun so we were having fun while we were actually becoming our best selves if that makes sense so um, if anything it's just I enjoyed the ride I learned to enjoy the journey it's an amazing feeling to actually be inducted into the Hall of Fame because I feel like so much of who I am as a woman today um, was learned throughout my time at SIUE a lot of the lessons I probably learned once I left to be honest but um, the character that I was building um, was instilled then like hard work determination never giving up even when you feel like you want to um, and to be able to be acknowledged for all of those things means that someone sees me especially in my time today like I have both of my kids where's your brother I have um, both of my kids here with me um, my needs and my wants and my desires oftentimes are outshined by theirs so I'm able to really <laughs> to really like sit in and be like you know you really did a great job Christine great job and um, I thank SIUE for recognizing the hard work and I thank them um, for accepting me because you I mean they could have chose anybody but they chose me so I appreciate that um, congratulations mommy Christine Butler Miller Our next inductee is Spencer Patton. Spencer played three seasons of college baseball for the Cougars from 2009 to 2011 and is number three in wins with 13 and earns run average at 4.01 in SIUE's Division I history. He is number three overall in strikeouts per nine innings at 10.48 and is one of only six pitchers ever at SIUE to rack up at least 200 strikeouts in a career ranking sixth overall with 201. Patton's 109 strikeouts in 2011 are the most in a single Division I season and rank number two in any season at SIUE. He won the ABCA Rawlings Gold Glove following the 2011 season. In 2014, Patton became just the fifth former Cougar to appear in a major league game when he debuted with the Texas Rangers. He's made 113 major league appearances, also appearing with the Chicago Cubs and the Oakland A's. Patton was a member of the Cubs when they won the World Series in 2016 and also pitched four seasons in Nippon professional baseball for the Yokohama Bay Stars, Spencer Patton. Pretty proud of myself to you know, be able to get this far and to, to have this honor, you know, to have a, a whole entire school athletic department acknowledge, you know, what I've done in my career uh, here at SIUE and professionally is, is truly remarkable and definitely something that I'll hold dear to my heart for the rest of my life. Um, I'm probably going to forget a few, but um, definitely want to, you know, thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for just giving me the opportunity to play baseball through my career, the talent, the skill level, the determination. Uh, got to thank my parents for taking me to all those games and practices and doing my laundry as a kid and through high school when I forgot my jerseys, bringing them to the games, you know, so definitely my parents, you know, it's a grind I'm going through right now with my kids, so it's a grind getting kids to practice on time and, and making sure they practice and play hard and teaching them the right way to play the game. Uh, all my coaches, junior high, uh, Marty Adams for um, starting me on the path to pitching. He was the first coach to let me uh, start pitching. Um, my high school coach, Kurt Jones, who you know had a ton of confidence in me, uh, pushed me 
you know, drove me to get better, um, always put me in the big game. So I, I, I got to thank him. Um, obviously, college coaches for giving me an opportunity to play after high school. Um, Mitch Rosenthal at Parkland for starting that off. And then again with Tony Stecklin and Bo Collins here at Edwardsville, you know, furthering my college career. Um, you know, I, I got to thank my wife for allowing me to keep playing at this old age and, and, and holding down the fort. Uh, she's a rock star. She's she's probably the main reason that I can keep going right now. Um, but I also want to thank all the professional teams that gave me a shot. Uh, the Kansas City Royals scout, Scott Melvin, who saw something in me, took a chance on me, and the Royals for, for drafting me, you know, a kid out of nowhere, Illinois, and, and giving me an opportunity. And um, But then all the other teams, the Rangers, the Cubs, the Japanese teams, um, you know, the Oakland A's, all those teams for for just continuing to let me do what I love to do and, and give me an opportunity to do so. My teammates, you know, all my teammates coming through. You know, I, I wasn't always the best teammate at times. You know, uh, sometimes I can be a bit of a jerk. Um, but, you know, they stuck with me. They believed in me. They pushed me. They called me out on my stuff when they needed to and and for the, made me, you know, the player and, and person I am today. So I, I got to thank them too. I mean, I've had a lot of teammates, a lot of, a lot of uh, good friends that have come out of this game. And uh, so I can't, I can't not sh give a shout out to them. So I think this program's on the right path. You know, um, I like this program. I love this campus. It's a beautiful place to go to school. Um, this program's continually silly ticking up, getting good talent, getting good guys in here, improving the facilities. Um, improving the school, the campus. Um, so I'm extremely proud to come from here. Uh, I know it's not a school that people know about a whole lot when you get outside of this region, but you know it is a, it is a good place to go to school. It's a good place to play ball. Um, I have a good relationship with all the coaches here right now, and I, I think they're doing a great job. But um, you know, I'm just I'm just very proud of myself to to be here to here tonight and do this uh, awesome occasion with with the rest of the nominees. Um, I think it's a great honor for all of us. I think we all enjoyed and had a passion for what we did, and um, whether we continued after SIUE or not, you know, it was something that we really took pride in and, and worked hard at. So it's an honor to be here. Once again, Spencer Patton. Our next inductee is Helen Robinson. A member of the first women's soccer team here at SIUE in 1982, Robinson remains number five on SIUE's all-time scoring list with 34 goals and 21 assists from 1982 to 1986. She is number five in all-time goals and number six all-time in assists. Her 157 shots rank seventh all-time for the Cougars. She recorded seven game-winning goals during her career. Robinson became the first player at SIUE to record double-digit goals in a single season when she scored 11 in 1982, and then became the first player with double-digit assists, notching 10 in 1984. She added a second double-digit season with 10 goals in 1986, Helen Robinson. Hi, it's Helen Robinson. Thank you so much for this honor. I really appreciate it. I think this is the 82 team being inducted for starting the program and we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, as I'd also like to dedicate this award to my family. Uh, on behalf of my parents, my mom and dad, who are both ballers, my mom a basketball baller, my dad a soccer baller, I just got the body for it. Um, it's also dedicated to my niece, Amelia Sanford, who was an MVP basketball player, and we lost her a couple years back, and it's been tough. Um, I thank you for this. Uh, I work constantly to move this sport forward in the women's world. And I think we're doing it. So thank you for this wonderful award and thank you to those who are sharing it with me tonight. I appreciate it. Helen Robinson. Our final individual inductee is Raven Barry Zachary from the women's basketball team. Yeah. 
the all-time leader in rebounds with 1,040. Raven is the only player in school history to be a member of the 1,000 point, 1,000 rebound club. She finished her career with 1,499 points, which still ranks fifth all-time. Zachary was the all-time leader in games played with 118 when she finished her career and is now number five on the all-time list. She recorded more offensive rebounds, 480, than any other person, and her offensive rebounds alone would rank her among the top 20 rebounders in school history. Zachary helped to lead SIUE to its first ever Ohio Valley Conference tournament appearance in 2013. After SIUE, she played 22 games with Strakonice, a professional team in the Czech Republic, scoring 155 points, and later made one professional appearance with the St. Louis Surge. Raven Barry Zachary. This is an amazing honor. I want to thank um, from my family, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, all the way back to my eighth grade coach, uh, Greg Kraft. Then we had Steve McFall. We had Todd Hill. The entire coaching staff that I experienced at SIUE. Um, everyone always believed in me and knew that I would accomplish a lot. And they just told me to keep working and to keep going. And I did, and I believed in them as much as they believed in me. Um, my husband, and I want to thank him. He, he's been around, <laughs> been around forever. <laughs> so I want to thank him for all his support and believing in me as well. Um, I had a lot of hometown support from Collinsville, uh, people that I didn't even know that was following me from throughout my entire career. I would end a game and they would be waiting for me when I come out the locker room uh, just to show their support and tell me that they've been watching me, handing me clips uh, from the newspaper that I never read, but they did. And that's how the and I still have those clips to this day. Um, that's the type of support that I knew I wanted when I played collegiate basketball. And that's the type of support I received because I stayed near home. And I believe this was the best decision for me. I give a lot of credit to my decision to Todd Hill, Amanda Levins, Coach Levins, and Coach Laura Gonzalez. Todd Hill was my uh, AAU coach. And he's the one that said, take a chance on SIUE. They're the ones, they're building something. And that's going to be special. And your name is going to be imprinted on that program forever. Um, and Amanda Levins and Coach Gonzalez, they trusted me from a freshman, a knucklehead freshman, <laughs> all the way up until they, um, they left to pursue their careers my junior year. And then when Coach Paula Busher came in and Carrie Kirkhoff, they still believed in me my senior year. They didn't recruit me. They didn't know who I was, you know. But they trusted, they trusted me as a captain. They trusted me as a player. They trusted me as a person to continue to um, represent the program. And I appreciate all of them for that. I had the best, I would say, teammates slash sisters that you could ask for. Um, this honor wouldn't be possible without them. I mean, I was a post player, let's be honest. Who I wasn't coming down the floor with the ball. <laughs> so I just want to, you know, include them in on it and say thank you. I appreciate you all. <laughs> and what do they always say at the end of the interview? It's a great day to be a cougar. <laughs> Raven Berry. Raven Berry Zachary. Old habits, sorry about that. So now, I'm gonna 
take this for you. So we do get a chance to talk to our inductees in person and that's something that um, we specifically wanted to keep as part of our program even when we made the switch to uh, videos. So I'm going to hand this to you. And I will start with you, uh, Christine, since you are closest to me anyway. Um, and you know, we, we talked about a lot, obviously, when we were shooting our video. And one of the things that stuck out to me and one of the things that you uh, said to me afterwards is just kind of to let you explain the impact that SIUE had on you and maybe not necessarily at the time, but what it has done for you since you have left SIUE. Yeah. Um, Pick I that up a little bit. I can think about, oh, that's a big difference. <laughs> I can think about um, just working with Jackie. <laughs> because um, let's, well, I'll, I'll tell my story. My story is, is as a student athlete, it took me a little bit of time to be where I needed to be uh, in the grade department. <laughs> so um, Jackie and my coach, um, we're behind me and it, we always talk about like we're all here because yes we are being inducted into the Hall of Fame but there's always a person behind the person um, that believed in us when we didn't believe in ourselves so for me that was my support system like um, all of my family that's here today um, my coach it was such um, I still have the quotes that he would give us when we had our workouts. Um, I keep them in my room today. Um, a lot of the things that were instilled in us about like can you know, I, I can shout a quote out if you think you are beating, you are. Come on, this. If you know I'm beating, <laughs> wait. If you think you are beating, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but think you can't, it's almost a sense that you won't. Um, those are things that I still as a coach myself, I coach gymnastics, I still teach my athletes. So everything that I learned as an athlete are things that inspired me to even um, decide to be a coach um, and make sure that I have as much of an impact on my athletes as my support system had on me. So thank you. Sir. Thank you. I will let you pass that on. Uh, Spencer Patton, uh, several years in Major League Baseball, but also four years in Japan that I know were very important to you. Um, how do you think that you were prepared to sort of be a citizen of the world coming out of college? Or were you prepared to be a citizen of the world? <laughs> I don't think I was prepared for much coming out of college just because of the person I was at the time. But, um, you know, our teammates, the teammates I had and, and the people that had, we had a the baseball program, you know, you come from all walks of life. Um, and so as a team, playing a team sport, you got to come together and, and move towards a specific goal, right? So I think no matter where I've gone in baseball, whether it's Mexico, Dominican, Japan, you know, we all have this one goal, and that's to win. And so you have to come together as a team, regardless of where the person comes from. Um, to accomplish that goal. And I think we did a pretty good job of that here at Roosevelt. I mean, we had people from Chicago, we had people from small town Illinois, like myself, uh, people from the St. Louis metropolitan area. So I think there was just a lot of different, um, I mean, we had people from Australia on the team. Um, so it's like we had people from all over the place come together, accomplish your goals. So I think that's something that, whether I knew it at the time, uh, was instilled in me here at SIU. Thank you. <laughs> Helen, for you, um, this may be a little bit similar to what Christine said, but I, I know that, that important to you and important to your growth as an athlete, as a person, was the coaches that you had and the, and the coaches that inspired you to uh, get to where you've become. Yeah, I don't think that you can play a sport your whole life and not look back at some of the head, the people that don't even weather, coming out there, standing with you, watching you learn this sport for hours and hours and hours, and, and some of those people never get credit, and so I want to say a few of their names to me. Sheldon Ornstein was a guy who had no kids, but he went out there every day and managed this little seven-year-old team of girls, the first one in the quarantine, and uh, I tortured that man. <laughs> 
and, uh, you know, because he wore glasses and I was a little kid, no brain. So uh, he was a great man and he spent a lot of hours dedicated to children. And without him, I wouldn't be here. I had a great high school coach, Jim Clavin, who taught me fundamentally how to be a human being. And I didn't have that in high school. I mean, I didn't have the understanding of what I wanted to do in the world. And so I needed these people, you know, and they spent their time. I can't believe coaches, I do that now, like uh, Christy was saying, because I just have to give back. These people have given me so much. Jim Clavin's wife and his assistant coach, Kristen, is here tonight. and. I'm going to tell you right now, she was my trick teacher, and I couldn't get through it. And she spent so much time helping me just get a C so I could go out there and play this game. And um, then I came here, and Lori Stark had to, had to start this, um, this program after being a coach of field hockey, I believe. And, you know, I didn't give people a lot of breaks if they didn't know the game. And so her name is very important to me, Lori Stark, who who took us around this country in vans and let us play and let us be, and we were really good. We were a really good team, and we had a lot of fun. The last person is Mike Kelly, who came in and coached us. And he really, because he played professionally, he was able to really give us some t some technique and some upgrades to like how we, how we kicked and how we did things. And so, Without these people, I am nothing. Without these people, I am not here. And so what I do now is coach, and what I do now is ref, which is even harder because I was more difficult on them than anybody else. So that's, uh, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Raven, we've talked about coaches, and we've talked about a lot of things, but uh, you joked in your video that you were a post player. You weren't bringing the ball up the floor, so you relied on your teammates. But teammates meant much more than just helping you on the floor, right? Teammates were important for a whole many reasons. Oh, man. Um, by the time I graduated, my teammates became a family. I mean, one of my teammates is my children's godmother, <laughs> my best friend, Jasmine Hill. Um, you go through so much with them. I remember one time, it was our junior year, my junior year, and it was preseason. Everybody had to make a time, mile and a half. We play basketball, we're not track, we're not soccer, we don't run. And everybody had a certain time. Well, the whole start five never made their time. <laughs> we went to the track coach, we're like, how do we shave? 30 seconds, 45 seconds off. We got this run tomorrow. She said, if we don't make it, we're not playing. So she's like, hey, tell your teammates, it take years to take that much time. <laughs> oh, man, we don't have time for this. <laughs> so coach let us, a teammate that made the time, we could ask one of them to run part of that, the half mile for us. So that was a moment that all of our, all of us as team, as team, teammates, bonded together just so we all could make that time. No one was being selfish. No one was like, "Oh, it's my time to shine." No, we all wanted everyone to succeed. And at the end of that, it took us a couple of weeks. And I really think it wasn't about the time. I think it was about our coach letting us know this is going to be a special season. And yes, we're here for you but your teammates is who you got. And that's who you have to lean on. And I appreciate our, every last one of them. From freshman year, all the way up to see, uh, my senior year, they're very special and they're very important to this um, nomination. Thank you. <laughs> Let's hear it one more time for our individual inductees, Christine Butler Miller, Spencer Patton, Helen Robinson, and Raven Barry Zachary. Thank you guys, congratulations. Mm -hmm. And our final inductees tonight, the 1985 baseball team which finished sixth nationally. They were led by Hall of Fame head coach Gary Collins, 
The 1985 team finished 37, 15 and one, sweeping through the NCAA regional with two wins over Sam Houston State and a win over Minnesota State Mankato. The Cougars were led by Hall of Famers and All-Americans Pete Delkis, who pitched, and Tony Duenas, who played first base and also pitched, and featured all region selections, Mike Robertson at shortstop and outfield, Steve Bloomer at third base, Tom Zielinski at catcher, and Pat Braun, who also pitched. Other members of the team included Tom Bray, Dan Buck, Richard Fletcher, Bob Frolickstein, John Gronert, Marty Johns, Tom Clanky, Todd Miller, Doug Orban, Dave Siebenberger, Dave Slimak, and Matt Smith. Representing the 85 team is our head coach, Bo Collins. Nineteen eighty-five team. Uh, the core of that team was three pitchers: Pete Delkus, Tony Duenas, and Johnny Rennert. And they were three sophomores that they came in as freshmen, and and they all showed me they could pitch well. And starting their sophomore years, they were all outstanding, and uh, they're all really good guys and leaders. And they drove the team, even though they were sophomores. And then we filled in that year with a, a guy that transferred in by the name of Mike Robertson, who ended up being our, by far our best athlete and player. And he ended up playing eight years, I think, in the Cardinal organization and, and uh, the last few in AAA. But he was a, a really talented kid from Granite City that had bounced around. He'd been to a couple other schools and he could play short or center field. And it, we needed him to play short on Saturday because my shortstop, because of uh, his crazy Seventh Day Adventist re religion, didn't play on Saturday. So Mike would bounce from center field into shortstop on Saturday and we didn't miss a beat because he was an outstanding shortstop too. And uh, just this was a really uh, good group of guys, and they had a lot of fun. And unfortunately, uh, Mike and Dave Slimak, our catcher, who was one of our leaders, both of them passed away uh, at a very young age. Uh, but it was an interesting team. And here's the, here's the really uh, interesting part. So we win the regional. We won three straight up at Lewis. Um, played great out there. And we go to the World Series. And my shortstop tells me that we're playing on Saturday, opening day Saturday. So I, I know he can't play on Saturday because he hasn't the whole year. But he tells me we can't play on Sunday either because it's one of their four special holiday or uh, religious days. So we go and we we lose two straight. He doesn't even play up at the World Series down in Montgomery. I got the media guide out and I looked and I, I saw where twice we won eight in a row, and um, and we played well. Uh, we were seven and seven against Division One schools. And I think we were 19 and 7 against Division II schools. So, you know, the team was consistent and uh, they were a good group. It was a really small roster. Uh, we only had 19 on the roster. And I think when we went to the World Series, we had a guy hurt and, and Gorbin couldn't play on, on Saturday or Sunday. And we, were, we only had like 16 active players which was really kind of strange. It was the only team I had with those small numbers. And they were a good group. I mean, they were a really, really good team and they, they deserve this honor. Uh, you know, as far as teams that are in the, the Hall of Fame here, they're certainly as deserving as just about any other. I appreciate all the work that everybody does out here. Uh, just coming back looking at the facilities and everything like that and the things we had to go through in 85 with this team. We didn't have a place to practice in the winter. Uh, we didn't have turf on the field. Uh, there were just a lot of things that have been in 
really improved for all the athletes. So I don't know who wants to start, but uh, Dan, you were volunteered by anybody I talked to early uh, and said that you wouldn't mind having the microphone, that you you were used to uh, you were used to a little spotlight. Give it to somebody else. But really, <laughs> really uh, He's afraid of what I'll say. For anyone out there, uh, I just want to know at what, what point you really knew that you had uh, a special team, that you had a team that was uh, you know capable of getting to the World Series. And if you want to start, please do. Yeah, I think uh, the team was pretty new together. We had a lot of guys who came in. We had a lot of freshmen, a lot of sophomores. We were a young group of guys. But I think where it happened, where the magic happened, was off the field. I mean, this team really bonded together. We hung out together. We did things together. And, and we lived together. Uh, we, we all were sweet mates. We coach made sure we were living together and, and got to know each other very quickly. And uh, that's important. And I think there's a trust factor that has to happen on any good team. And uh, when you got guys who are throwing the ball as well as Duanus and Delkis and Grenick, whatever, you know, we, we knew we could compete with anybody with those kinds of arms. And thank God we had a trainer who taught him a change up next door to me. But um, his changeup was devastating and the ability for us to go out there knowing we were going to be in every game, you know, I think. And then when you get down to a tight game, knowing you have that trust factor, um, no matter who was on the mound, no matter who was at the plate, I think this team of guys believed in each other. And that was a fun year because we had different heroes every game. It was, it was a fun year to be a part of. So for uh, any, any of the other members, when you got the news, when you heard you were going to be inducted into the, the SIUE Athletics Hall of Fame, uh, maybe not just the idea of being inducted to the Hall of Fame, but what about the idea of just coming back and, and getting together with these teammates? What did that mean to you guys? Anybody? I don't even know where the mic went. I was thrilled to have the opportunity to maybe meet with so many old guys that hadn't seen forever. Actually, I hadn't seen these guys since probably 86 or 87, right? Maybe a couple. Um, I guess when I got the call, I wasn't really quite sure why they picked the sixth place finishing team. <laughs> to be in all. We thought we could win it all. We had a really good team. Um, <laughs> we could go into some dark stories. <laughs> PG, please. <laughs> uh, no, we'll keep it. Uh, no, I, I, I was uh, honored to, for the thought that, that uh, they inducted us into the Hall of Fame. I haven't gone far. I've lived in Council all my life, and I have not strayed very far from here at all. Um, it's nice to see all the old guys back. I tried to reach out to a couple others to try to get them here, but uh, unfortunately, they couldn't make it. So, no, it's, it's a great honor. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's great seeing the old guys here. Wish we had uh, so many others, but thanks for inducting us. Absolutely. Anybody else want to want to touch on that one? Yeah. What was the question? The, just uh, the idea of getting the chance to, to kind of see some of the guys again. So, yeah. I'll, uh, uh, let me answer your other question first. Yeah. Please do. Because the uh, what was it? It was like uh, just it, was there a point yeah, that yeah, you so that you felt like he clinched. The opportunity to go to the World Series. You guys don't maybe not remember this. I, I had broken my jaw, and it wasn't during a fight, but I broke my jaw, and uh, there was you know the dog pile, the celebration afterwards. And I could literally feel my jaw bone moving up and down. That's when I knew we were going to the World Series. Uh, but so when uh, Coach Lyons reached out to me and contacted me and uh, told me about this, it, it really actually hit me. Um, in a, in a very special way, because uh, 
I think about this time of my life, and I've said this uh, in many different settings, but this, these four years that I spent here, really, uh, I can think of four formative things that happened that really is, it's really shaped, of course, of, of the rest of my life. Uh, probably the most important of which is the, that I met my wife now of uh, 32 years, the mother of uh, four of the best kids in the world. Uh, I, uh, at some point during that four years, I learned and realized that God should be at the center of every decision I made in my life. And uh, I learned, uh, well, uh, Dr. Nancy Parker, who uh, was a, a key figure in my life, she was my advisor, convinced me to go to medical school, and that changed the course of my life. And the fourth thing really was that, about this team, guys, I'm coming around to you. Uh, we were part of something that was bigger than the sum of the individual parts. And that concept is, uh, has shaped the, my, my whole uh, life thus far. I've always wanted to be part of something that's bigger than, than myself, and, and these guys were that to me. Nobody else? Yeah. Nobody else wishes to address that? I, I will tell you, when I had a chance to catch up with Coach Collins um, and we were filming this, you know, one of the things he said that stuck out in his mind, and, and it's, it's maybe hard to convey in that video, but he, you know, he talked about looking at the guide to look at some of the games. He said, because what stands out is you guys. And that's what he said is what stands out is my players and the guys that played here. So congratulations to all of you, to the 1985 baseball team, now Hall of Famers. Oh, no. I didn't think you wanted to. You're, you're welcome to speak again. Can I say something to the players? Absolutely. I just want to thank this year's team, all these red shirts for being here. And, and, and I'm sure I can speak for all these guys in this sense is that, you know, leave it all in the field. I think all of us could tell you that there were some regrets that we didn't maybe put in the effort, the time, uh, both as, as teammates, but also as individuals that we could have worked harder. Don't have that regret. All right, so the next few years you guys have, this is the, for many of you, it may be the last time you get to really play high level ball. Push yourself to be the absolute best player you can be, the best teammate you can be. And I think what we've achieved, we had a phenomenal season, you guys can do that. And we'd love to see that as, as long as of this, to see you perform at a D1 level and to be able to turn it on because every, every one of you commit to a bigger, higher standard that SIU asked you to do. And it's hard, man, there's a lot of distractions. We all, we were distracted, were we not, guys? Yeah, just a little bit. Don't let the distractions get in the way of greatness. And I think that's, that's the message we all would love to convey to you is that we were good. We'd love to see you guys go out there and be great. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. You want to say something? I had three rules, be on time, work hard, and don't do anything that your mother would object to. <laughs> Thank you, Coach, and again, congratulations to the 1985. I want to know where we can get jackets like that. We need, we need to get some retro jackets like that. 1985. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Say, hey, Jake's our merchandise guy, so look into, look into redoing that. Look at that. I'm auctioning it. Hey, Joe, Three scholars. Those are great. Well, thank you guys again. Congratulations to the 1985 baseball team. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, as our inductees get their uh, last pictures there taken, the last professional pictures taken, I want to thank you for attending tonight. Uh, whether you represented a family of an inductee, a past inductee, a current student athlete, a former student athlete, a current coach, a former coach, 
Uh, this is the kind of night, as I mentioned, that we like to celebrate here at SIUE. We like to pay attention to where we've come from and that foundation. I hope that all of you have plans to join us tomorrow as our men's and women's basketball team takes on Tennessee Tech beginning at one o'clock and then again at 3.30 and uh, our alumni reception that happens in between. Um, I would certainly invite everyone to come out and do that. So thank you for joining us here tonight for our 17th SIUE Athletics Hall of Fame induction. We appreciate you being here. Enjoy your time back at SIUE if you're returning or enjoy your time at home if you're here. Uh, enjoy the campus, enjoy the area. Thank you again and please drive safely.